ISIS surveillance video of takeoff in Cuevo, along with her entourage, walked into Houston's Johnny Dang and Company custom jewel. Hours later, takeoff was gunned down. Last night, rapper PNB Rock was shot and killed. Now, with many pointing the finger at his girlfriend, they say if she didn't post on social media, he'd still be here today. Photographs hold memories, telling stories in different ways. However, for these rappers, their last photographs give a haunting glimpse into the reality of their final moments, while telling an unforgettable story of who they were just minutes before their deaths. Here are the 15 most disturbing last photos of rappers. Number 15, Tupac Shakur. I'm not saying I'm gonna rule the world or I'm gonna change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. What better name to begin with than the number one OG of rap, Tupac Shakur. September 7th, 1996, 29 year old photographer Leonard Jefferson traveled to Las Vegas to attend a Mike Tyson fight. Unfortunately, he missed Tyson, but he did spot Tupac in his new BMW sedan with shiny rims. Jefferson asked if he could quickly take a photo, to which Tupac agreed, but what they didn't know is this iconic photo would turn out to be Tupac's last, as he was tragically shot and killed less than 30 minutes later. The story of his death, however, didn't begin that night. It all started with a failed attempt on his life two years earlier, when Shakur was shot and seriously wounded during a robbery committed by two armed men in the lobby of a midtown Manhattan office building that housed a recording studio where he'd been working on his third album, Me Against the World. Shakur attributed that attack to producer Sean Puff Daddy Combs and rival rapper Christopher Wallace, also known as the Notorious B.I.G. This was one of the reasons he joined the LA-based record label Death Row Records, igniting the infamous East vs. West Coast, defining the hip-hop scene in the mid-90s. However, unfortunately it would also play a role in his eventual murder. On the night of the incident, photographer Jefferson stepped out to the driveway to get something to eat when he spotted Tupac and his whip. Surprisingly, he had known Tupac from his time as a student at the UCLA Film School. They both exchanged pleasantries, having a brief conversation. What Jefferson didn't know was that Tupac had just been involved in a disastrous altercation before their meeting. Also coming down to watch the Mike Tyson-Bruce Selden boxing match, Shakur and others in the entourage were captured on tape in the lobby of the MGM Grand Hotel, engaging in a violent scuffle with a man later identified as a member of the LA-based Crips. Tupac was captured punching that man to the ground, almost beating him unconscious, if not for the interference of hotel security. Tupac would then go to his room, change, and head to the Club 662 to perform at a charity concert. Now, if you look at this photo, Tupac's on the passenger side of that vehicle, driven by Marion Suge Knight, the head of Death Row Records. Barely 20 minutes after that photo was taken, a white four-door late model Cadillac pulled up beside their car, the shooter in the back of that caddy, rolling down the window and rapidly shooting his 40 SNW Glock 22 at Shakur's Beamer. Shakur hit four times, twice in the chest, once in the arm, and once in the thigh, with a bullet piercing his right lung as well. Fragments of that bullet also hit Knight in the head. Yet he was able to drive almost a mile away from the scene to LA Boulevard, where paramedics attended to him. A few days later, it was announced that Tupac had died from his injuries. Number 14, King Vaughn. Police say 26-year-old rapper King Vaughn, whose real name is Davon Bennett, was one of six people shot last Friday near Trinity Avenue. King Vaughn and his group were at Opium Nightclub before making their way here to Monaco Hookah Lounge, then to the parking lot where chaos ensued. Born on August 9th, 1994, Devon Daquan Bennett, aka King Vaughn, was an American rapper raised in Chicago, Illinois. Now, from a young age, he was associated with the street gang, Black Disciples, and O Block rappers like Chief Keef. Vaughn had a lengthy criminal history and many run ins with the law. He went to jail for the first time at only 16 and was arrested for unlawful possession of a firearm two years later. He's also alleged to have put a lot of work for the gang and is rumored to have killed around four to five people, earning him that moniker, Rap Serial Killer. Now, no one knows how much of that is true, but what we do know is that Vaughn wanted to turn his life around 
especially after seeing the success of Lil Durk and his other childhood friends in the music industry. So in 2018, Lil Durk signed him to his record label, OTF, and he released his breakout single, Crazy Story, that same year. With the backing of Lil Durk, that track immediately blew up, putting Vaughn on the map. And yeah, he ran into more trouble with the law during this time, even getting incarcerated at one point. But that notoriety just took his name to new heights. Vaughn and Lil Durk would go on tour, making Vaughn leave the streets to focus on his career. However, his street life came back to haunt him, and unfortunately this time, it took his life. November 6, 2020, Vaughn and his crew left the Opium nightclub, headed towards the Monaco Hookah Lounge in Atlanta. Upon arrival, Vaughn got into an altercation with a fellow rapper, Quando Rando, and his crew outside. And what started as this harmless argument turned into a bloody event. Quando Rondo and King Vaughn got into a fight, prompting Rondo's friend, Lil Tim, to brutally fire shots at Vaughn and kill him on the spot. In response, Lil Tim was shot by one of Vaughn's friends, with two cops opening fire from two different locations. It all happened so fast that there were many versions of this story just floating around online. But the one thing we do know is true is that six men were shot during this entire altercation, and Vaughn, along with two other men, were killed as a result. As quickly as his career started, it finished, and fans were left behind with only his music and recordings. Despite his past, Vaughn was a very talented artist. He deserved a second chance to turn his life around, as most people should. His legacy lives on through his music. So real so, y'all just keep King Von alive, man. Don't let him die just because he dead don't mean he dead. Keep him alive. King Von to the end, y'all. King Von to the end. Number 13, Lil Peep. This was the last photo taken of American rapper Lil Peep minutes before he OD'd on fentanyl-laced Xanax. Now, what makes this even more disturbing is that the woman in that photo provided him with the drugs while the bus behind was where he died. Born November 1st, 1996, Lil Peep, real name Gustav Elijah Ar, was a member of the emo rap collective Gothy Boy Click. This guy was a pioneering member of an emo revival style of rap and rock music, becoming an inspiration to outcasts and youth subcultures. In 2013, he began releasing music on SoundCloud under the name Trap Goose, later changing his artist name to Lil Peep because his mom called him that since he was a baby. He soon became popular on that platform with the release of his 2015 single, Star Shopping, and his popularity grew further with the releases of mixtapes like Lil Peep Part 1 and Live Forever later that year. However, as he became a household name in the music industry, his rampant use of hard drugs increased. He actively talked about his issues with depression, anxiety, and substance abuse, even stating that he had bipolar disorder. But for some reason, he never was medicated for depression. While everyone around him insisted, he just didn't want to. Instead, he found solace in smoking weed and consuming whichever other drugs came his way. In his final interview before his death with Zane Lowe, Peep confessed that his depression was getting worse, saying, Things just get worse. Things already get worse and worse and worse every day. He also talked about his addictions with cocaine, ecstasy, and Xanax in his lyrics, posting it on social media, describing himself as a productive junkie, advising his audience to avoid drug use, a piece of advice he should have taken himself. November 15th, 2017, Lil Peep was found dead on his tour bus, when his manager went to check on him and prep for that night's performance at Tucson, Arizona. While his death contains many disturbing details, many of his fans believe he was overlooked by management, and here's why. In a series of Instagram posts in the hours leading up to his death, Lil Peep claimed to have ingested psilocybin mushrooms and cannabis concentrate. In another, he claimed to have consumed six Xanax pills following a video depicting his attempts to drop an unidentified pill into his mouth several times before actually swallowing one and shaking a full prescription bottle. Then in yet another, he captioned a post, When I die, you'll love me. I think the man was telling everyone that something was about to go down. But the bigger problem was that emergency services were called five hours after he OD'd. The fact that no one checked on him in all those five hours is deeply concerning, especially given that it might have saved his life. And apart from Xanax, a cocktail of other drugs were found in his system. His blood tested positive for marijuana, cocaine, and the painkiller Tramadol. 
His mother, Liza Womack, filed wrongful death charges against his management company, FAE Group, claiming they encouraged his use of drugs despite knowing his addiction. Although the charges were settled in her favor, Lil Peep's death brought an end to a youngster who was on the path to change the rap scene. Number 12. Takeoff. Supporting rapper Takeoff, a member of Migos, is dead. November 1st. 2022, following a private party at 810 Billiards and Bowling in the Green Street commercial development part of Houston, Texas, Takeoff was mercilessly shot many times in the head and torso. Born June 8, 1994, Takeoff, real name Kirshnik Kari Ball, was raised by his mom in Lawrenceville, Georgia. He started making beats and developing rhythms in seventh grade, not really starting to produce professionally until 2011 when he joined his uncle, Quavo, and his cousin, Offset, to form the rap group Migos. In 2013, they took off with the viral hit Versace, a record that was later remixed by Drake. From there, they honed in on their sound with mixtapes and guest spots on songs with rappers like Gucci Mane and singer Justin Bieber, before releasing their first studio album, Young Rich Nation, in 2015. They collectively earned two Grammy nominations, one for rap performance for the single Bad and Bougie, and another for the 2017 rap album Culture. They also got the ASCAP Vanguard Award in 2018 for streaming success on the hit track Motorsport, featuring Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. But as successful as that group was, their downfall began in 2020 when Takeoff was accused in a civil lawsuit of sexual battery and assault. He could have been prosecuted, but before any court appearances were made, he was murdered. On the day of the incident, approximately 40 people had gathered outside the bowling alley after the party ended. Then out of nowhere, an altercation breaks out on the venue's third floor entrance, and at least two guns were fired, with stray bullets hitting takeoff. A nurse who lived nearby heard the shots and ran to the scene, only to see takeoff in a pool of his own blood. She stayed with him until the ambulance arrived, but by then he was already dead. Obtained footage from the scene shows Quavo, in an orange shirt, and others gathered around takeoff. At first they try to move him, but then put him back down as Quavo yells for someone to get help. More disturbingly, takeoff posted a photo of himself lighting up on his Instagram story accompanied with the song, Stop Breathing, by Playboy Cardi. That added to many twists and conspiracy theories surrounding his death and it makes us wonder if his death was truly by accident. Number 11. Nipsey Hussle 3.18 p.m. March 31st, 2019 Nipsey Hussle was shot at least 10 times in the parking lot of his store, Marathon Clothing, in South Central LA. The killer was an old-time friend, Eric Holder. Born August 15th, 1985, Armius Joseph Ascadome, aka Nipsey Hussle, was raised in Crenshaw, South Central LA. He grew up with his single mother, Angelique Smith, and at the age of 14, he would join the local Roland 60s neighborhood Crips, where he met Eric Holder, the man that would eventually end his life. Now the two were both part of this gang, and both aspiring rappers. But in 2002, at the age of 17, Nipsey Hussle joined Butter Vision, a creative multimedia digital guerrilla movement led by Dexter Brown, where he would be a part of a few musical projects and release his first mixtape, Slawson Boy Volume 1. This shifted Nipsey from being just a hood rapper to a global artist recognized around the world. In turn, he would get into charity with his community, helping teenagers stay away from violence and maybe make it out. On the other hand, Eric Holder's music never caught on. He went by the stage name Fly Mac, and his songs never went past his neighborhood. Two hours before Nipsey's death, Holder met up with a woman that he'd known for about a month. Feeling a bit hungry, the unidentified lady took Holder into her white Chevy Cruze to get some food in South LA. Coincidentally, Nipsey Hussle was outside his store in South Los Angeles, taking photos with his fans and signing their autographs. He recently purchased the entire shopping center, where he once sold his mix CDs from the trunk of his car, with plans to turn the place into a mixed-use residential and commercial center. Nipsey spent about half an hour talking with fans and old friends before Holder and the woman pulled up to purchase food from the store. Now here's the catch. The lady had no idea Holder and Nipsey used to be close friends. She rushed to go say hello to Nipsey, but in the process, 
Nipsey saw Holder and called them aside to talk for a bit. However, that conversation wasn't quite what anyone expected. Nipsey informed Holder that he was gaining a reputation as a snitch in the neighborhood and needed to watch his back. Out of anger, Holder pulled out his gun and shot at him 10 times, killing him instantly. The last photo of Nipsey was taken barely five minutes before he was shot. It was with a young fan who admired him, and sadly, his philanthropy died with him. Number 10. Notorious B.I.G. This is the infamous Notorious B.I.G. in a photo with P. Diddy after a party. And this is the last known photo of him 20 minutes before he was shot dead in a ruthless drive-by. Born May 21, 1972, Christopher George Wallace, known professionally as Notorious B.I.G. aka Biggie Smalls, was the most prominent East Coast practitioner of gangsta rap. His 94 record, Ready to Die, sold millions and started a heated feud with the leading West Coast rapper Tupac Shakur. Now, Biggie's raps about violent street life weren't completely fiction. If there was a rapper who actually rapped about the things he's done, then he's one of the top three. He grew up in a poor section of Brooklyn, having many run-ins with the law. Even after he got into the music world, his legal troubles continued. In the summer of 96, he was arrested when police found marijuana and firearms at his New Jersey house. He also once assaulted a pair of admirers with a baseball bat. No doubt he was a real gangster, an OG in the game. However, his death was the culmination of an ongoing feud between rap music artists from the East and West Coasts. March 8, 1997. Wallace attended a Soul Train Awards after party hosted by Vibe and Quest Records at the Peterson Automotive Museum in LA, California. Now, later that night, the fire department closed the party early due to overcrowding. Biggie left with the entourage and two GMC Suburbans to return to his hotel. However, as they made a traffic light stop, a black Chevy Impala pulled alongside him. The driver, an unidentified black man dressed in a blue suit and bow tie, rolled down his window, drew out a 9mm blue steel pistol, and fired at Wallace's car. Four bullets hit him, and his entourage rushed to Cedars Sinai Medical Center, where doctors performed an emergency thoracotomy, but he didn't make it out. The murder of Biggie has never been solved. And the only suggestions that we have are maybe Marion Suge Knight, the former head of Death Row Records, or some random Crips gang member. Now, Knight was shot, but not wounded seriously in that fatal Las Vegas attack on Shakur, and is rumored to have engineered a retaliatory strike against Biggie, whom he held responsible for the Las Vegas shooting. But regardless of whether or not Knight was responsible, he's been in jail for a fatal hit and run since 2018. Number 9. Mac Miller. Well known rapper and producer Mac Miller, who was a longtime boyfriend of Ariana Grande, was found dead today. TMC reporting from an apparent overdose. September 7th, 2018. Mac Miller was found unresponsive in his Studio City home by his personal assistant, who called 911 and performed CPR until paramedics arrived. But by the time they did, he was confirmed dead. Mac Miller, real name Malcolm James McCormick, was known to be one of the most promising up-and-coming young musicians in hip-hop. He began his career in Pittsburgh's hip-hop scene in 2007 at the age of 15, and three years later he signed a record deal with independent label Rostrum Records, releasing his breakthrough mixtapes, KIDS, and Best Day Ever. However, it wasn't until he released his debut studio album that Miller got some traction in the industry as this album, Blue Slide Park, became the first independently distributed debut album to top the US Billboard 200 since 1995. But as he climbed the stairs of stardom, his mental health declined. Miller spoke openly about his problems with drugs and depression, and to manage stress during his Macadelic tour in 2012, Miller began taking promethazine and later became addicted to lean. This landed him in trouble a couple of times, like when he was arrested for possession of marijuana in New York, and again when he was arrested for a DUI and hit and run after crashing into a utility pole and fleeing the scene with two passengers. Police obtained his address from his license plate and Miller confessed when police arrived at his home. He was taken into custody and released on a $15,000 bail. August 2018, Miller was charged with two counts of DUI for the incident. Sadly, Miller had died before his arraignment, and the charges obviously were dropped. 
A day before his death, this photo of Mac Miller was published by Vulture magazine and has now become his last known photo. He'd been scheduled to shoot a music video on the day of his death and was to embark on a swimming tour the next month. But how exactly did he die? Well, after an investigation was conducted, three men who police say supplied him drugs were arrested. One of them, Cameron James Petit, allegedly sold Miller counterfeit oxycodone pills containing fentanyl two days before his death. Petit got those drugs from another guy named Ryan, and Ryan got it from his contact, Stephen Walter. Supply chain, but none of that would quantify the impact that these men had caused in the music industry. November 5th, 2018. The LA County Coroner's Office determined that Miller died from an accidental drug overdose due to the mixed drug toxicity of fentanyl, cocaine, and alcohol. He had tried so many times to quit, but he just couldn't. And in the days that followed, thousands of fans held a vigil for him at Pittsburgh's Blue Slide Park, the inspiration behind his debut album title. It's a memorable sight, holding on to his legacy. Number 8. Juice World December 18th, 2019, Juice World took his photo with his crew on a plane headed for Chicago. By the time they got to Chicago Midway International Airport, he was dead. Born December 2nd, 1998, as Jared Anthony Higgins, Juice World was a Chicago rapper known for his hit Lucid Dreams, which peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and became one of the biggest streaming hits of 2018. He collaborated with Travis Scott on Astro World, contributed to the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack, and collaborated with BTS's RM and Suga. In simple terms, he wasn't just rising, he was skyrocketing. However, just like some rappers of our time, Juice World had his fair share of battling depression and substance abuse. He had a long history of drug abuse and began at an early age, often speaking openly about his experiences. His mother also claimed that he was dealing with anxiety and depression. Higgins had already agreed to attend drug rehabilitation, but sadly he didn't get the chance. Now from the photo, this guy was alive and looking normal. What could have happened from that picture to the time they landed? Well, according to reports, law enforcement was waiting for that jet to arrive, having been notified by federal agents while the flight was en route that they suspected there were guns and drugs on board. Officials later revealed that they found 70 freaking pounds of marijuana on that aircraft and said many members of his management team aboard the flight told him that Higgins had taken several unknown pills, including allegedly swallowing a lot of Percocets to hide them while the police were on board searching the luggage. This was absolutely the most ridiculous and insane thing to do. I mean, we could see he was trying to avoid any charges, but at this point, that might have been better than what happened next. Higgins then began convulsing and seizing. He was then given two doses of emergency medication Naloxone, which was given because they thought he had an opioid overdose. A 911 call was placed to Chicago's police department informing him that a man, Higgins, had suffered a medical emergency. He was then taken to the nearby Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oak Lawn, where every medical practitioner tried to keep this man alive. But despite their efforts, Juice World died. However, this isn't where his story ends. January 22, 2020, the Cook County Medical Examiner stated that Higgins died as a result of toxic levels of oxycodone and codeine present in his system. And the only reason why the feds even came after him is that someone on the plane, maybe even in that photo, must have snitched. But the question is, which one of you did it? Number 7. Pop Smoke Pop Smoke was known by some of the biggest names in the business, like Nicki Minaj and 50 Cent. His murder has stunned fans everywhere. This was a photo of Pop Smoke 24 hours before he died, and this was the last photo he took just 10 hours before his death. He didn't kill himself, nor did he engage in a brawl. Instead, these photos and some others posted by this rapper resulted in his pointless murder. 2 a.m. February 19th, 2020, a black BMW rolled past a house that rapper Pop Smoke was renting in Hollywood Hills. The driver circled back and stopped. A security cam would capture a passenger getting out and sneaking towards the back of the house before returning a minute later. Then the car sped off. At that time, Pop Smoke was about a few miles away recording at a studio in Sunset Boulevard. 
He returned two hours later, and again a car pulled up, an Infiniti sedan with its headlights off. This time, four suspects in hoodies, including one wearing a mask and carrying a weapon, broke into his home to rob the rapper. Reports say that Smoke was in the shower when they got in, and as soon as he heard noises, he came out and tried fighting him off. Sadly, it ended with his death. Ten minutes later, three of them ran back into the camera's frame. The footage showed the fourth walking out the front door holding a purse and a gun. The death of Pop Smoke, real name Bashar Baraka Jackson, was as brazen as it was pointless, like it really made no sense. According to reports, his murder was orchestrated by teenagers and was meant to be a random robbery. However, it ended up robbing the rap world of one of its brightest young artists. The LAPD received news of the home invasion from a call on the East Coast. Police arrived at the home six minutes later, finding Jackson lying in a pool of his own blood with multiple gunshot wounds. He was rushed to Cedars Sinai Medical Center where doctors performed a thoracotomy on the left side of his chest, but a few hours later he was pronounced dead at just 20 years old. The bigger story though is that his last photos played a huge part in that murder. At first, the cops suspected that Jackson's death was gang-related, as he was tied to the Crips. Earlier that day, Pop Smoke uploaded photos showing large amounts of money, designer goods, and a luxury car. His friend Mike D also posted images, including one which the home's address can be partially seen in the background. It was obviously a mistake, and didn't really mean anything, until Pop Smoke himself also posted a story on the Gram and Facebook of designer bags, and the house's full address could be read on the packaging, correlating with the one seen on D's post. July 9th, 2020. Three adult men and two minors were arrested for the murder of the rapper. One of these adults was charged with murder, but with a special circumstance alleging the killing was committed during the commission of a robbery and a burglary, and the other was charged with attempted murder. And it's just disturbing knowing that no matter the sentence given to these killers, Pop Smoke will never be with us again. Thankfully, his legacy lives on. Number 6. XXX Tentacion. July 18th, 2018. American rapper Yase Duane Ricardo Onfroy, known professionally as Triple X Tentacion, visited the Bank of America to withdraw money before heading to Riva Motorsports an upscale seller of motorcycles and boats in Deerfield Beach, Florida. These were the last photos taken of him while at that location. However, this next photo that became widely known showed him sitting with gunshot wounds in his car. Now he was dead. Born on January 23, 1998, Onfroy was surrounded with lots of controversies growing up. He had many run-ins with the law, even getting sent to juvenile prison at one point. But by the time he got out, he would turn his life around with his sensational music. In 2013, he launched the first track, News Flock, on SoundCloud. Five years later, he had over 2 million followers on that platform. He had a meteoric rise from there. But his controversial attitude didn't stop. He once confessed to domestic abuse against his pregnant girlfriend, Geneva Ayala, and also to the stabbing of nine people. He was known to be involved in different feuds with other artists, sparking even more outrage with a music video depicting him lynching a white victim. Nevertheless, he made beautiful music, exploring heavy themes like depression, loneliness, and suicide. He was on the brink of something with his music. Sadly, we may never know what. On the day of the incident, he had no idea he was being followed by a dark-colored Dodge Journey SUV with three men inside, the men who would later perpetrate his murder. After spending nearly a half an hour inside that dealership, Onfroy left with his uncle, Leonard Kerr, and began to drive away in his BMW i8. The Dodge SUV then drove in front of his car, blocking his only exit from the dealership while the two robbers, Newsome and Boatwright, exited the vehicle and demanded property from Onfroy with firearms. A brief struggle ensued in which Boatwright and Newsome punched Onfroy several times with Newsom aggressively demanding Onfroy's chain. Amid the struggle, his step-uncle fled the car, leaving the door open and allowing Newsom to get into the passenger side and retrieve his Louis Vuitton bag containing 50K. But despite the robbery being over, Boatwright walked back over to Onfroy's car, held up his rifle, looked at him in the eyes, and ruthlessly shot many times, killing him in cold blood. 
Shortly following that announcement of his death, the Broward County Sheriff's Office offered $3,000 for a bounty on any information leading to the arrest of any suspects. Originally, a lot of fans of his, many numerous internet users and local residents, suspected local Florida rappers Soulja Kid and Soulja Jojo to be the killers of Onfroy. Due to several suspicious Instagram posts made by the pair with specific details that corroborated with witness reports. However, these accusations were later dropped when the two of the three men responsible, Edric Williams and Michael Boatwright, were arrested and gave a confession. All three men were charged with first-degree murder and robbery with a firearm, leading to a nice life in prison without the possibility of parole, a sentence that many say doesn't equate to the gruesome act that they perpetrated. Number 5. Young Dolph New at 5, rapper Young Dolph is dead after a shooting in his hometown of Memphis. November 17th, 2021. Young Dolph was fatally shot in Memphis whilst visiting Makeda's Homemade Butter Cookies, a bakery he frequently visited whenever he was back home. However, his death not only brought an end to his illustrious career, it shook the foundations of Hollywood. Born on July 27, 1985, Young Dolph, aka Adolph Robert Thornton, found success in the music industry at a very young age. He received mainstream attention for his guest appearance on OT Genesis's 2015 single, Cut It, which peaked at number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100. And the following year, he released his debut studio album, King of Memphis, which peaked at number 49 on the Billboard 200. From there, he dropped album after album getting record sales on each project. He was signed to Paper Route Empire, and his most successful album was 2020's Rich Slave, debuting at number 4 on the Billboard 200, and was his highest charting release. He worked hard for his money, and it was amazing to see him winning. Well, not for everyone though. September 2017, Young Dolph was shot outside a retail store in Hollywood. And hospitalized in critical condition. He spent two weeks in that hospital, recovering from three gunshot wounds, and investigations believe the attack was a retaliatory move on a music album titled Bulletproof that he dropped in April of said year. Maybe the perp took Thornton's artistry way too seriously, but a few years later, they struck again. On the day of the incident, this photo of young Dolph was taken by a fan as Dolph walked into the bakery. Now it has come to be his last photo ever taken, as two gunmen in a white Mercedes-Benz gunned him down a few minutes later. Crowds of hundreds swarmed the scene of Thornton's death for hours, people whom he might or might have not known grieving his death, and it's very understandable why this was so. Before he died, young Dolph was well known for donating turkeys around Thanksgiving time to people around town. He participated in a lot of charity work and once donated a whopping 20,000 to two baristas at Duke University who were fired for playing his song Get Paid. This was a guy who did nothing but good for the people he loved, yet he was murdered. For what? Exactly. Absolutely no reason. Number 4. Freddie E. January 5th, 2013, hip-hop artist and internet personality Freddie E committed suicide. More disturbingly, he took this selfie and live-tweeted the moments leading up to his death. 22-year-old Freddie E, born Frederick E. Boll, was best known for his YouTube program Jerk TV. He graduated from Nathan High School and the Art Institute of Seattle, where he studied digital filmmaking and video production. Now, this background helped him to keep his audience engaged on his show, which included satirical and profane segments and skits, often blended with Freddie's sharp social commentary and cautionary messages. Now, on the day of the incident, Freddie E sent a series of increasingly dark and depressed messages. He started tweeting about how bad his day was after dealing with heartbreak, and went ahead to more than a dozen brief messages between 12.52 p.m. and 2.34 p.m describing in vivid detail his emotions and actions. For context, Freddie E was trying to do something with fellow rapper Honey Cocaine. They had a little stint for a few months, but after they split, Freddie's emotions went on a downward spiral. A month before his death, he posted a heart-throbbing text on his Facebook account that read, I talk to Honey damn near every day. I text her, she calls me, we talk on the phone for hours. 
I've met some of her family and she's met some of mine. We call each other by our birth names. I'd take a bullet for her, as would she take one for me. I actually know her. Where you see a rapper, I see a writer. Y'all can't tell me nothing about it. Then, on the day of the incident, he posted disturbing tweets like, Smoked my first pack of six today. Been a long time since I gone through heartbreak. It's a cold, unforgiving world if I do say. God, please forgive me. I'm sorry. For several hours, many fans believed it was just a stunt on social media. However, when his family confirmed his death, everyone turned their attention to Honey Cocaine. Now, when she heard the news, she defended herself from the onslaught of attacks claiming that she was responsible for his death. Many of Freddie E's loyal followers insisted that their breakup was what pushed him over the edge. In her defense, she said, To say I caused what happened is ignorance. You know nothing about our friendship or the story. Hate me if you feel. We loved each other. We were homies. We had a bond and a connection. For people to attack me acting like I made him do it is a shame. Say it's my fault, threaten me, whatever. I knew him well enough to know he had other things happening. I was there for him all the time. While we may never discover the exact details of what transpired between them, his final photo and series of tweets will serve as the only tangible memories for his loyal fans, symbolizing his legacy. Number 3. Lexi Elege. December 29th, 2019, female rapper Lexi Elege posted this photo on her Instagram. Three days later, she was found dead in her apartment. Born February 19th, 1998, Lexi Elege, real name Alexis Elege Lynch, was raised in St. Paul, Minnesota. She was the granddaughter of famous musician Robert Troutman, founder of the Ohio funk band Zap. Seemingly looking forward to also making a name in the music industry, she dropped out of high school to pursue a full-time music career. She began rapping over the beats of popular songs by artists like Dej Loaf, Tupac, and Drake, and in no time, she dropped her first mixtape. She'd collaborated with many artists during this time, but the real break for her career came when she collaborated with Kalani right before Kalani dropped her commercial mixtape you Should Be Here, which peaked at number 36 on the Billboard 200. Her lyricism and incredible flow on that track Jealous earned her a spotlight, which many say she deserved a long time ago. Sadly, she didn't even live long enough to bask in her fame. January 1, 2020, Alexi was found dead in her room at the Lowe's Minneapolis Hotel. An autopsy was conducted leaving the Hennepin County Medical Examiner to rule her death as an overdose of fentanyl and alcohol. But it didn't make any sense. How? Why? What was the reason? These and a bunch of other questions are still in the minds of her fans. But at the same time, conspiracy theorists believe there's more to her death than we know. Number 2. Simone Battle Not necessarily a rapper, but Simone Battle was an all-around entertainer who killed herself. However, a day before she was in a photo shoot for a magazine, seemingly looking like her life wasn't about to end in the next 24 hours. Simone was born on June 17, 1989 in LA, California and began a career in acting in 2006. You might recognize her from her role in Nickelodeon's Zoe 101 and Everybody Hates Chris. In 2011, Battle would audition for the American singing competition The X Factor. She sang When I Grow Up by the Pussycat Dolls and received three yeses from the judges. This sent her through a boot camp where she was mentored by Simon Cole. However, after getting to the top 17, she was eliminated from the girls' category by her own mentor, Simon. But once her time on the show came to an end, Battle decided to officially launch her music career. August 2012, Battle was initially part of the Pussycat Dolls' proposed new lineup after the past members disbanded back in 2010. Her addition to the group was announced during the opening of the Pussycat Dolls' dollhouse at the Keating Hotel in San Diego, California. Battle allegedly took her own life. September 5, 2014, Simone Battle was found hanging in her bedroom closet. Close sources and investigations suggest that she suffered from depression due to financial crisis, but others believe that she was murdered. This photo was taken of her barely 24 hours before her death. That's quite disturbing, don't you think? And number one, 
P and B Rock. September 12th, 2022. Philadelphia rapper P and B Rock, whose legal name was Rakeem Allen, was robbed and fatally shot at Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles in Los Angeles. However, while his colleagues offered condolences, his fans battled over X, formerly Twitter, over who was to blame. You see, the police believe Rakeem was brutally attacked by an individual who apparently, or we believe, came to the location after his girlfriend, Stephanie Saibin Huang, posted this picture to her story, which contained their location. That aside, the killer went straight to meet PNB Rock and demanded his property. An argument ensued, forcing the killer to shoot him many times before leaving with his valuables to a waiting vehicle. Rakeem was rushed to the hospital, but sadly, he died en route. Now, what's more disturbing about this story is the fact that just a few days before he died, PNB Rock discussed how he, as an entertainer, felt like a target for crime. During an interview with DJ Academics, he described a time when he and his family were tailed in LA. He would say that LA criminals were bold and that robberies targeting rappers were so common. He tried to steer clear of nightclubs and locale where he believed he would be a prime target for those killers. Yet, despite his desperate efforts to cling to life, he ultimately succumbed to a fate that left him lifeless. 